The story begins in the midst of a fight where a group of guys in sophisticated armors engage in a duel with the rival team in the middle of an island, giving us a glimpse of the anim theme. Going back to how it all started, our protag named Ichika finds himself in a school where he's the only guy making him feel intimidated. Just then, the teacher, who introduces herself as Yamada, welcomes them to the boarding school and asks them to introduce themselves, which turns out to be Ichika's first failure as he does it in a very mediocre way. This act doesn't go unnoticed by the tutor, who just arrived and already slams the protag against the table. After this, we learn that she is his older sister, Orumura Chifuyu, a legendary is pilot who represented Japan. Kifuyu introduces herself to the class as the one in charge of teaching them the techniques to master the infinite stratos or is, a highly sophisticated multiform suit. And Yamada continues explaining the creation of the is 10 years ago with the goal of space travel, but now they are used for sports and even warfare. In the same class, there is Hauki, Ichika's childhood friend, who helps him out after the other students whisper among themselves about him because he's the only guy who has been able to pilot and is. They both leave to talk, and Ichika tells her that she hasn't changed much. She compliments his good memory, but he mentions that he could never forget his childhood friend. Later in class, Ichika attempts to ask a question, confessing that he doesn't understand anything. Chifu asks him if he read the guidebook, to which he responds negatively, being humiliated once again by his sister. At the end, Alcat Cecilia, a popular elite student representing England, approaches Ichika to greet him, but he doesn't know who she is, and she becomes deeply offended. She boasts about achieving the highest score in the entrance exam by defeating her instructor, to which the product responds that he also defeated his own instructor. This makes her explode in anger, warning him that their conversation is far from over. Later, the product heads towards his room, being followed by his curious classmates. Upon arriving, he hears the voice of his roommate welcoming him from the shower. He listens as the voice gets closer until they come face to face, only to realize that it's Haki. Ichika stares at her in astonishment as she is covered only with a towel and is also paralyzed. Both of them wonder what they are doing there, but quickly realize that they are roommates. However, Haki becomes angry at being seen in a towel and accuses Ichika of requesting her as a roommate, but Ichika denies it. She attacks him with a wooden sword, causing the protag to flee from the room and close the door, but Hauki manages to thrust the sword through the door multiple times. Once she is dressed, she lets him back in, and they come to an agreement on how to share the room. The next day, Chifu tells everyone that they must choose a class representative who will compete in the tournament and attend the assemblies. Unexpectedly, several girls propose Ichika as the representative, but Cecilia stands up offended, stating that she should be the representative. She challenges the protag to a duel, and he accepts. In class, Chifu tells Ichika that the school will make a personalized is for him. Cecilia comments that it will be fair since her own is as customized as she is the representative of her country. Later, Yamada explains that the energy of the suits is linked to the body of the person controlling them, so they have to see them as companions. We also learn that the developer of the power core for the suit is Dr. Shinonono Tabane, the older sister of Hauki. During the break, Ichika tries to invite Hauki to have a meal, but she refuses, but Ichika insists and takes her hand, leading her to the cafeteria. While they eat, the protag asks Hauki, if she can help him control the is they will give him. At first, she hesitates, but suddenly another girl appears, offering herself as a tutor, so Haki reacts, stating that she is the most suitable person to help him since she is Tabane's sister. With the deal closed, Haki and Ichika train in Taekwondo, a martial art that helps with handling the is. A week later, all the students gather on the school campus to witness the duel. Teacher Yamada informs the protag that his personalized is has arrived and assists him in getting ready. Ichika places his hand on the Ez to establish a connection and flies towards the campus where Cecilia awaits him. She gives him the opportunity to surrender, but he refuses adamantly, so Cecilia starts firing, hitting him with the first shot, but Ichika increases his speed, evading Cecilia's attacks. He tries to get close to Cecilia to use his sword, but she counters with missiles, leaving Ichika unsure of where to fly and the missiles catch up to him. However, they don't even scratch him as his Ez protects him, assuming it's second form and surprising everyone. Ichika lunges at Cecilia, but before even touching her, Shifu announces that Cecilia is the winner, leaving everyone confused. Shifu explains to her brother that he lost because he used up all the energy of his is on his sword, and Teacher Yamada gives him a guidebook to learn how to properly use his is. After the event, Hauki asks Ichika if he's sure that she should continue training him, to which he responds affirmatively, and they return to rest. The next morning, Shifu gathers the whole class to teach them how to fly with their is, using Cecilia and Ichika as examples. Cecilia puts on her suit in a snap, while Ichika takes a bit longer to focus, but they both start flying. Cecilia tells Ichika to use his imagination to control his suit and offers to teach him what she knows. That's why when Shifu asks them to perform a dive landing, she demonstrates by plummeting towards the ground almost crashing, and then soaring back up for a flawless landing. The product tries to do the same, but can ascend after reaching the ground, leaving a big hole. 
Cecilia tries to help him, but Hauke intervenes, arguing that he's fine, and there's clear tension between the two of them. Later, the girls celebrate Ichika's appointment as the class representative, as Cecilia stepped down from the position after realizing that Ichika only lost because he was fighting someone with much more experience, and she wanted him to be the representative. During the photo session, Hauke positions herself between Cecilia and the Prota, when she sees them standing so close, feeling a bit jealous. Back in their room, Hauke apologizes for her behavior earlier that day. The next day, the girls whisper that there is a new representative in class 2 and precisely she appears at the door of their classroom, announcing that they will soon face each other in the school tournament. Ichika is surprised to see her because she is his other childhood friend named Fan Rinin, whom the protege calls Rin. Just then, Shifu arrives and sends Rin to her own class. During lunchtime, Ichika and Rin catch up, which leaves Hauki and Cecilia less than thrilled. While they eat, Rin asks him how he ended up in that school and he tells her that on the day of the entrance exam, he entered the wrong classroom where there was an is, he touched it, and it started connecting with his body. When the instructors saw that, they were impressed to see a boy controlling an is, so they admitted him to the school. Hauki and Cecilia interrupt them, demanding explanations about the nature of their relationship. The Pradive explains that Rin was his second childhood friend after Hauki. Both girls say they hope to get along, but they immediately start arguing over who should train Ichika. Since neither of them wants to be left out, they decide to train together later. In the changing room, Rin seeks out Ichika and asks if he missed her during the time they haven't seen each other. He responds that he felt lonely without his friend, but her satisfaction is not evident. However, they can't continue their conversation as Ichika has to return to his room with Hauki. Rin, surprised, asks if he sleeps with Hauki, and he explains that they are just roommates. Rin then accompanies him to the room and suggests to Hauki that they switch rooms, but she refuses and tries to kick Rin out of the room by attacking her with a sword. However, Rin quickly covers herself with the arm of her is, demonstrating her incredible reflexes. Rin becomes angry because Ichika doesn't support her idea and challenges him in the upcoming tournament. The winner will be able to ask anything of the loser, and the loser must fulfill the request. In the school tournament, it's Ichika's turn to fight against Rin, so Hauki and Chifuyu give them some final advice before the match. In the arena, Rin prepares to attack first, but Ichika also deploys his sword and charges towards her. The battle begins, and both fighters attack and dodge each other. Rin is surprised by Ichika's resilience against her attacks, so she changes her strategy and manages to land a hit, bringing him to the ground. Ichika gets up even more determined, evades the shots, and remembers how his sister won using that same sword, so he considers using her technique. Ichika taunts Rin, telling her that this time he will fight seriously. As expected, she fires at him, and he dodges the attack, preparing to strike her with his sword. However, just as he is about to do so, something falls from the sky, creating an explosion in the arena. Professor Yamada orders the campus to be evacuated and instructs Ichika and Rin to go back inside. However, Ichika wants to distract the assailant while the students evacuate. The hostile individual shoots at Rin, but Ichika quickly flies and catches her in the air, protecting her and evading the laser. As the smoke clears, I get a clear view of the enemy and unidentified is Rin suggests distracting the enemy so that Ichika can get close and attack with his sword, and they put their plan into action. However, the enemy defends themselves skillfully, and Ichika misses several times. Meanwhile, in the operations room, Cecilia asks Chifuyu to let her assist in the battle, but Chifuyu refuses. No one is allowed to leave since the enemy has interfered with the security system, trapping everyone inside. Chifuyu seems to have faith in Ichika and Rin's abilities, tells the others that they must also have faith in them. In the arena, the product keeps trying to hit the enemy while suspecting something strange about it. He tells Rin that due to its odd behavior, he is, he seems to be unmanned. With that in mind, they conclude that they don't need to hold back because they won't harm any humans. Ichika plans to use all of his energy to cleave the android in two with his sword, and at that moment, Hauki shouts from the platform, catching the android's attention, so it prepares to shoot her. Ichika reacts by asking Rin to fire her weapon with everything she's got, but when she's about to do it, he positions himself in front of her to absorb the energy of the shot and amplify his is, with his sword's power at its maximum, he charges at the robot and manages to sever one of its arms, but it doesn't fall to the ground and aims to shoot Ichika. Just as it's about to do so, it receives a powerful shot. It turns out to be Cecilia, who has managed to escape and orders the android to bite the dust. However, the robot rises again, aiming at Ichika, but he gets up and launches himself at it. Later, Ichika wakes up in the infirmary just as Rin was about to try to kiss him, narrowly avoiding being caught. Rin tells him that the robot shut down, and no one else was injured. Just then, Cecilia arrives and gets angry with Rin for being there, but Hauki also enters the room and gets upset at finding both of them there. The three of them start arguing until Ichika asks about Chifuyu, to which they respond that they don't know where she is. In another scene, Chifuyu is with Yamada analyzing the robot, realizing that it has a different core from other is units that allows it to be autonomous. On his day off, Ichika takes the opportunity to visit a friend and play video games. 
His friend's sister arrives and calls out to her brother. She is surprised to see Ichika there, but she also invites him to join them at the table. At night, Ichika and Hauki are in their room when teacher Yamada enters. She tells Hauki that she will be changing rooms, assuming she would prefer to be with another girl. However, Hauki says that she doesn't mind being with Ichika. Nevertheless, Ichika interrupts saying that she doesn't need to worry about him and that he can wake up on time by himself. This indifference angers Hauki, and she requests to move to a different room that very night. However, she returns a few minutes later to challenge Ichika. She proposes that if she wins the school tournament, he will have to go on a date with her. The next day, teacher Yamada asks everyone to welcome a new exchange student from France. Just then, a golden-haired boy named Charles enters and introduces himself. All the girls get excited to have another boy in their class. Kifu tells everyone to calm down and assigns Ichika to take care of Charles, so that he feels more comfortable with another guy. The girls remain restless if Ichika takes Charles to the changing room to get ready for the next training session. While changing, Charles asks Ichika to turn around and he seems a bit embarrassed. In the arena, Chifu asks Rin and Cecilia to give a demonstration, whispering to them that Ichika will be watching. With that motivation, they are ready to fight. Suddenly, teacher Yamada falls from the sky and crashes, squashing Ichika and leaving him in a very convenient position, raising jealousy among Ichika's friends. Kifu tells Rin and Cecilia that Professor Yamada will be their opponent, and they think that it will be easy to defeat her together. However, they are completely mistaken as they fail to land any shots on the professor. On the contrary, she manages to confuse them and make them entangle with each other, and then she shoots them down. Both of them fall to the ground, completely exhausted. Chifu tells everyone that she hopes they now have a greater respect for their teacher. Afterwards, Chifu Chifu orders students with personalized is units to form teams to facilitate learning and teaching. Ichika and Charles are surrounded by all the girls hoping to be chosen for their teams. Once the teams are formed, Ichika starts teaching each girl how to walk in an is suit. It's Hauki's turn, but she struggles to climb into the upper part of the suit due to her height. So Chifu orders Ichika to lift Hauki into the suit. While being carried by Ichika, Hauki takes the opportunity to invite him to lunch, and he accepts. However, when it's time to eat, Ichika also invites Charles, Cecilia, and Rin, much to Hauki's frustration. Rin prepares Ichika's favorite dish, Cecilia offers sandwiches and snacks from her country, and Hauki prepares a delicious traditional meal to Ichika's taste. Ichika seems to enjoy Hauki's meal the most, triggering jealousy among the others. Later, Charles is already settled in Ichika's room, and they plan to train together after classes. The next day, teacher Yamada announces to the class another new exchange student named Laura Bodwig, who comes from Germany. After introducing herself, she unexpectedly approaches Ichika and slaps him, saying that she will never accept him as Chifu's younger brother, leaving everyone shocked. After class, Ichika trains with the girls but struggles to understand their explanations. Then Charles invites him to a duel to assess his skills and Ichika agrees. They engage in close combat, but then Charles switches to long-range attacks and Ichika, unable to withstand the barrage, is advised to learn about long-range weapons. Charles lends him his own weapon and Ichika feels more satisfied understanding Charles and his female classmates. Suddenly, Laura appears with her third-generation German is and challenges Ichika to a fight. Ichika declines, stating he has no reason to fight, but Laura attempts to force him by shooting at him, so Charles steps in front of Ichika, blocking the shot with his shield and Chifu intervenes via megaphone, reprimanding their behavior. Ichika thanks Charles for protecting him and asks why he doesn't want to change together, but Charles blushes and quickly runs off to the dormitory. On his way, Ichika spots Laura having a conversation with his sister. She's frustrated by her failed attempts to convince Chifu to return to Germany, as she sees Chifu's role as a school tutor as a waste of time. Chifu admonishes Laura, telling her to stop behaving like a teenager and sends her to her own room. As Laura departs, Chifu scolds Ichika for wasting time spying on others instead of focusing on his training. This conversation triggers Ichika's memories of being kidnapped while his sister was competing in the final of the Is World Championship. Chifu abandoned the competition to rescue him. Filled with guilt, Ichika makes a vow to no longer depend on his sister. In their room, Ichika notices that Charles left the soap outside, so he goes to hand it to him. However, when he opens the bathroom door, he realizes that Charles is not the person he claimed to be, so she blushes and immediately covers himself. After leaving the bathroom, Ichika offers Charles some tea, and Charles explains that they had been pretending to be a boy on the orders of their father, who owns the best second generation is factory in France. The company is nearly bankrupt, and Charles was sent to gather manufacturing information from other is units, and to gain fame as the second male is pilot. Ichika promises not to tell anyone, but just then, Cecilia knocks on the door and enters the room, causing Charles to quickly jump onto the bed, covering themselves up to the neck and pretending to be sick to avoid being discovered. Cecilia takes Ichika to dinner, and in the hallway, they encounter Hauki, who complains about their closeness, so Hauki joins them, and the three of them go to have dinner together. Later, Ichika returns to their dorm room with food for Charles. 
Since Charles doesn't know how to use chopsticks, she asks Ichika to feed them the food, and Ichika gladly obliges. Meanwhile, in another location, Laura is plotting to eliminate Ichika. The night when Haki challenged Ichika, saying that if she won the school tournament, he would have to go on a date with her. One of their classmates who was spying on them interpreted the challenge to her convenience and shared it with the others, which led to the spread of the rumor that the winner of the championship could have a date with Ichika. All the girls started considering it as an offer, which surprised Hauki as she realized how her words had been distorted. However, she wants to win the championship this time, without repeating the mistakes of the past. She was a lonely kid who rarely spent time with her family, and her only escape was Taekwondo. But all the pain she carried inside made her fight aggressively, and holding back her punches ended up hurting others. So now she's determined to win the tournament fair and square. Meanwhile, Cecilia and Rin are in the arena training when Laura shows up and starts provoking them. They decide to fight back and both launch themselves at Laura, but she effortlessly dodges every shot. The commotion reaches Ichika's ears, so he rushes to the arena with Charles and Hauki. Upon arrival, they witness Laura easily blocking Rin's shots, and then swiftly immobilizing and mercilessly attacking them. In a final attempt, Cecilia fires a missile at close range, but when the smoke clears, they see Laura completely unscathed. She then traps them again and continues to brutally beat them, pushing Ichika to his limit. Unable to bear it any longer, he breaks through the arena barrier to come to their aid. However, Laura blocks his attack and immobilizes him, calling him weak. Charles intervenes and shoots at Laura while Ichika ensures the safety of the girls, but Laura proves to be a match for him as well. Shifu steps in and stops the fight, reprimanding them for the damage caused and instructing them to continue their battle in the tournament. Later, Cecilia and Rin wake up in the infirmary feeling sore, and their classmates arrive with the news that the tournament will be held in pairs. Everyone wants to be Ichika's partner, but he tells them that you will team up with Charles. Everyone, including Cecilia and Rin, feels disappointed. However, Teacher Yamada informs both Cecilia and Rin that they cannot participate as they need to recover. Anyway, they tell Ichika that they will support him, believing that if he wins, he won't have to go on a date with any of the girls. Later, Charles thanks Ichika for choosing him for the tournament, avoiding a random pairing, that it's time to sleep, so Charles suggests that they change clothes while facing away from each other. However, as they do so, Charles gets tangled up and falls down. Ichika turns around to try to help her, but he slips and accidentally removes Charles' panties. Overwhelmed by embarrassment, Charles kicks Ichika, rendering him unconscious. Charles then puts Ichika on his bed and goes to her own bed. The next day, the results of the random pairings and the tournament schedule are announced. Hauki discovers that she will be partnered with Laura and will also face Ichika and Charles. During the battle, Ichika engages Laura with his sword, but she blocks him with her shield, but it was a distraction for Charles to take a shot. Hauki joins the fight, but Laura doesn't cooperate and leaves her unsupported. Ichika and Charles combine their suits for a more effective attack. Hauke recovers and keeps fighting, but Charles strategically shoots her, disabling her as Ichika's sword fails again, but Charles reappears behind him and manages to injure Laura. Despite this, she continues to put up a fight, but Ichika and Charles exchange weapons and strike her repeatedly. As Laura witnesses her defeat, she reflects on her past and how she was created for combat, fueling her determination not to lose. This activates an unknown function in her suit, transforming her into a powerful weapon and copying Ichika's sister's technique, which infuriates him even more. However, Ichika's energy runs out, but Charles shares hers and once recharged, Ichika activates his sword and successfully slices through Laura's suit, setting her free. Ichika realizes that Laura's is had control over her instead of the other way around, so he promises to protect her just like he does with his friends. On the other hand, the tournament gets cancelled and the students are sad because now none of them can go on a date with Ichika. However, Ichika tells Hauki that he still wants to go out with her regardless of everything, which makes her excited but her excitement fades when she hears Ichika suggesting going shopping. Later on, teacher Yamada informs Ichika and Charles that a special bath for boys has been opened where they can relax. Ichika goes without expecting Charles to join him, so he feels embarrassed and tries to leave. However, she stops him and tells him that she decided to keep studying at the school because of him. Meanwhile, she gradually moved closer to him until her breasts collided with his back, and tells him that he can now call her Charlotte. The next day, teacher Yamada welcomes a new student, who turns out to be Charlotte. The girls discover that she had always been a girl and had shared the room and bathroom with Ichika. This infuriates them and Rin tries to shoot Ichika, but Laura suddenly appears and shields him. She then kisses him on the mouth and declares that he will now be her fiance without any objections, leaving everyone stunned. At nightfall, Hoki calls her older sister, who informs her that she is prepared to personalize his suit for her. The next morning, Ichika wakes up next to Laura, causing him to startle. He realizes that she is naked and confronts her about it. Laura responds by saying that now that they are engaged, they can sleep together. Ichika tries to reason with her, but Laura puts him in a lock just as Hauki enters the room. 
Upon witnessing the scene, Hauki is left shocked and angrily hits Ichika. Afterward, Ichika goes shopping with Charlotte as they need swimsuits for their school trip. Charlotte asks him to hold her hand, but Ichika interprets it as a measure to prevent them from getting separated and lost. As they walk, Cecilia and Rin keep an eye on them, curious about the type of relationship they have, and Laura joins them. Meanwhile, Ichika and Charlotte continue walking in search of a swimsuit when Ichika's friends appear and greet him. Rand tells him that she will soon join his school, and he wishes her good luck. Suddenly, Charlotte quickly takes him to a swimwear store and leads him into one of the fitting rooms, as she has noticed they are being followed. She then undresses behind Ichika to try on the swimsuit, making him very nervous. Once she's ready, she asks Ichika to turn around and look at her, seeking his opinion. At that moment, Chifuyu and Yamada open the curtain and scold them for changing together. At the beach, Rin jumps on Ichika's shoulders, but Cecilia interrupts and asks him to apply sunscreen on her back, making the others jealous. In the water, they race towards a buoy, but Rin gets a leg cramp and loses control of her body. Ichika quickly comes to her aid and brings her to the shore and Cecilia forcefully takes her to the infirmary, while the others go to play volleyball. Suddenly, Laura gets hit in the face with the ball because she was distracted, thinking about the compliment Ichika gave her earlier. In the end, everyone has fun and enjoys a beautiful afternoon. Later, Hoki tells Shifu that she spoke to her sister, and she doesn't know anything about the hostile suits. The next day, they have an elegant lunch, but Cecilia feels uncomfortable and asks Ichika to feed her, causing the other girls to complain loudly, resulting in Shifu scolding them. Ichika invites her to his room later, and she accepts, thinking they will be alone and things might get intimate. She dresses provocatively, catching the attention of her classmates, who notice that she is wearing sexy lingerie. Upon arriving at Ichika's room, she finds the girls trying to eavesdrop behind the door, so she also attempts it, but the door collapses. Ichika was giving his sister a massage, and both of them look at them strangely. However, Chifu tells Ichika to give massages to the girls as well, so he starts with Cecilia. But Chifu interrupts and lifts her robe, revealing her lingerie and comments that's quite daring for her age. Then, Chifu sends her brother to fetch drinks to get rid of him and asks the girls directly what they like about Ichika, advising them to put more effort if they want to achieve something with him. While heading to class, Ichika and Hauki spot some buried rabbit ears on the ground with a written message. However, Hauki ignores them and walks away. As Ichika picks up the ears, he notices something falling from the sky. It turns out to be a giant carrot, and from it emerges Tabane, Hauki's sister, who greets him and goes to find Hauki. Later, Shifu gathers the students with personalized his units, and Tabane joins them to greet her little sister, although Hauki remains rather indifferent. Suddenly, something else falls from the sky, revealing a never-before-seen fourth generation is specifically designed for Hauki. Hauki tests it, surprising everyone with its speed and attack power. However, Yamada arrives with bad news, informing them that another is drone has gone out of control and is approaching the school, so they will have to stop it. Chifu asks Ichika to take it down, but Tabane says that Hauki's is is the best for the mission, so they will go together. When the time comes, Ichika and Hauki prepare to fight. Hauki carries Ichika on her back to reach the target faster. Upon finding it, Hauki tries to get as close as possible to it, so that Ichika can bring it down with the full power of his sword. However, the enemy evades and flies even faster. They try again, but once more they fail. They attempt a third time and it seems like it will work, but Ichika abandons the attack and veers off to intercept shots aimed directly at an illegal vessel passing by. Hauki becomes angry, calling them criminals unworthy of protection, but Ichika stops her, emphasizing the value of saving lives and reminding her how much she has changed, forgetting about the weak. Hauki realizes her mistake and starts crying, so the droid takes advantage and attacks them with projectiles, but Ichika shields Hauki, and they both fall into the water. Later, Shifu continues to search for another solution, while the girls wait outside, worried about Ichika. Hauki feels guilty and realizes that Ichika only wanted to protect the people on the boat, while she selfishly sought enjoyment in the fight. Yamada arrives and tells her to rest, but she goes to the beach and can't stop running while remembering how Ichika defended her when they were children. At that moment, the girls find her and Rin scolds her, saying that she can't just stay there crying when it's time to fight. Laura tracks down the droid, and upon seeing the determination of the others, she feels motivated to join the battle. Upon finding their target, the girls attack the android, but easily dodges their attacks, so they join forces to eliminate it. Meanwhile, Ichika is dreaming of a serene place where a girl dressed in white appears. In the battle, the girls continue to attack, while Ichika sees another armored woman in the distance, standing on a beach. Hauki manages to land a hit on the android, partially disarming it and causing it to fall. The woman on the beach asks Ichika if he desires strength. Meanwhile, the android emerges from the water in its second transformation, much more powerful. Ichika answers affirmatively to the woman in his dream 
who asks him again why he desires strength. He responds that he only wants to protect his friends and the girl in white tells him that he must go. In the battle, the android is overpowering each of the girls one by one. Hauke falls to the ground wishing to see Ichika and suddenly her wish comes true as Ichika arrives to help. Ichika launches an attack on the android, successfully blocking its shots. The rest of the girls quickly join him and combine their attacks in sequence. Hauke's strong desire to protect Ichika unlocks a hidden ability in her suit, allowing her to recharge her own energy and replenish Ichika's as well. Together, they coordinate their attacks as a team and manage to inflict damage on the android, finally enabling Ichika to launch a decisive strike and defeat it. After the battle, Chifu reprimands them for disobeying orders, but she also acknowledges their achievement by granting them a day off. While having lunch, the rest of their classmates are curious about the details but then realize that Ichika and Hauki are missing. Hauki is at the beach with Tabane, asking her opinion on the hypothetical situation where a genius had planned everything to make her younger sister debut as an IS pilot in a magnificent way. Tabane responds that she thinks it would be a fantastic idea, hinting that everything was planned by her. Afterwards, Hauki finds Ichika and apologizes for her mistakes, accidentally bumping into him with her chest in the process. She apologizes, but then she places Ichika's hand on herself, asking him if he is aware that she is a woman. Nervously, Ichika responds affirmatively, and they lean in for a kiss, but they are suddenly discovered by the other girls who become outraged and threaten to kill him while starting to shoot at him. Thus, the first season ends with Ichika and Hauki fleeing from their jealous classmates. Infinite Stratus and Core Koini Kobura Rokujuso on the student's day off, Trumlet goes to visit Ichika at his house. She is excited because she will have the afternoon alone with Ichika, but there is a knock on the door, and they discover that it's Cecilia. She greets them friendly but secretly curses Charlotte in her mind for beating her to the idea. The three of them share the desserts brought by Cecilia, and then Charlotte suggests that Ichika feeds them by hand. Ichika agrees and then they want to feed him in return, but someone knocks on the door. They answer it and find Hauki, Rin, and Laura who have also come to visit Ichika. Since they are now a larger group, they decide to play a board game. Suddenly, Chifu arrives at the house, but she doesn't stay for long and leaves, claiming to be busy, so that they can have a better time together. The girls suggest cooking something for dinner, so they go to the supermarket. There, they pick their ingredients while trying to prevent Cecilia from buying anything to cook, as they know she is bad at cooking. Nevertheless, she ends up preparing something that turns out to be a disaster, while the others make delicious dishes. Regardless, they all have an enjoyable evening. The next day, Hauki visits the temple where she grew up and helps with the preparations for the summer festival that will be held that night. In the evening, she is at the Omikuji booth when Ichika comes to visit her and compliments how beautiful she looks in the traditional outfit she's wearing. The booth owner kindly tells them to go and have fun, so they go out for a walk together. However, they run into Ran, Ichika's friend's sister. They spend some time together, and although Hauki is disappointed that she can't be alone with Ichika, she ends up liking Ran. Since her brother was looking for her, Ran leaves with him and Hauki has to return to the booth because it's time for the Kagura dance. Ichika goes to watch her dance and is amazed by her talent and beauty. Afterward, they go for a walk and talk about everything they have experienced until then, including funny moments and major challenges, but they are happy to have reunited. The second season starts with Ichika having a dream where he sees a woman in armor who resembles his sister, suddenly grabbing him by the neck and trying to kill him. When he wakes up, he sees Laura lying in his bed waiting for him to wake up and giving him a flyer for the end of summer festival, inviting him to go. Ichika accepts, saying it would be great if everyone can go, which makes Laura angry without Ichika understanding why. Later, Cecilia returns to the academy, delighted to see Ichika again, who happens to greet her and invites her to the end of summer festival. She accepts, unaware that they won't be alone. On the other hand, Laura and Charlotte are having lunch when Charlotte suggests going shopping for clothes. Meanwhile, Rin is in her room when Ichika knocks on the door and enters, but Rin hits him for seeing her in her underwear, and then she notices the invitation to the festival. Laura and Charlotte are at the store looking for clothes, so Charlotte finds a cute black dress and heels for Laura to try on and helps her walk in them. Laura looks so beautiful that everyone around starts taking photos of her. Meanwhile, Hauki is taking a shower when Ichika knocks on the door to invite her to the festival, and she eagerly accepts. Charlotte and Laura are at a restaurant when Charlotte playfully accuses Laura of wanting Ichika to see her in her new dress, but they are interrupted by the manager who had been observing them. She offers them part-time jobs, which they accept. Charla is given a butler outfit that fits her perfectly, and she dazzles the girls as she serves a table. Laura, on the other hand, is given a maid outfit that makes her look adorable. Suddenly, some guys enter the place and attempt to rob it. They take the customers hostage and demand a getaway car from the police. When the criminals start shooting, Laura and Charlotte step in and fight them. However, one of the criminals reveals a bomb, but Laura and Charlotte shoot and destroy it. Laura cleans it off with her tongue, which intimidates Charlotte a bit. Later, 
It's nighttime and Charlotte dresses Laura in a cat-themed pajama, and she wears a matching one herself. Ichika arrives to invite Charlotte to the festival and finds their choice of pajamas amusing. Elsewhere, the woman resembling Chifu arrives at the headquarters, the guards shoot at her, but she defeats them, prompting the arrival of warriors in his suits. One of them asks her what her objective is, and she responds that she is there to take the seal is located in this base. She transforms and prepares to attack. The next day, the girls gather to go to the festival, feeling annoyed as they realize Ichika has invited everyone. Reluctantly, they all go together, but they have a great time, each trying to seduce Ichika in their own way. The night ends with a bonfire, with the boys bidding farewell to the summer vacation. The next day, Ichika and Rin fight in the first practical training of the new semester. Ichika starts strong but runs out of energy and Rin defeats him. Later, an eccentric girl approaches him. He asks her who she is, but she only mentions that he will be late for class, which turns out to be true. In the school assembly, the eccentric girl introduces herself as Teitnashi Sarashiki, the student council president, and presents the school agenda, reminding everyone about the upcoming school festival. Then in class, they discuss entertainment proposals for the festival with all of them wanting something involving Ichika, but he refuses, so Laura suggests a maid cafe as a way to earn money, and everyone agrees. Afterwards, Ichika runs into Tetanashi in the hallway, and she tells him that she will be his trainer. Despite him mentioning that he already has several trainers, she insists that he should be trained by the best is pilot in the school. They then engage in a hand-to-hand -hand duel to determine the decision, but no matter how hard Ichika tries, Teitnashi ultimately defeats him. Teitnashi's victory makes her Ichika's exclusive trainer, while the other girls have to resign themselves to cooperating as training partners. Teitnashi asks the girls to perform a demonstration for Ichika to observe their skills in action. Later, it's Teitnashi and Cecilia's turn. Teitnashi explains that the exercise focuses on shooting abilities, but ultimately, Ichika is defeated. The next day, Teitnashi trains Ichika's speed with a challenging exercise. So later, exhausted, he falls asleep while his friends talk to him. The next day, the maid cafe opens and Ichika greets customers at the door. Lane arrives and chooses a set called Enjoy Your Butler, which allows her to feed Ichika. Later, a woman interrupts Ichika and offers him his equipment, but his companion comes to his aid so he can leave. Afterwards, Teitnashi asks Ichika for help in a play, where he plays the role of the prince. Ichika mentions not knowing the script, but she assures him they can improvise. At the start of the play, the protagonist is in the middle of the stage when suddenly Ling and Cecilia arrive and begin attacking. It turns out that Tatmeshi had declared that whoever takes Ichika's crown can move in with him. In the midst of the chase, Charlotte tries to help him, asking him to give her his crown, but Tatmeshi electrocutes him, preventing him from taking it off. Cecilia and Ling continue shooting at him, followed by Laura, but Tatmeshi launches a missile at her, which they fortunately manage to dodge. Now, Ichika encounters Hauki, who is determined to take his crown, but Teitnashi drops a giant ball that comes rolling towards them, that they evade it. Laura catches up and starts fighting with Hauki, while more girls join the challenge. Ichika attempts to escape, and suddenly a small door opens in the ground, and an arm pulls Ichika inside. Turns out, it's the saleswoman from before who transforms into a giant spider and tries to steal Ichika's armor. Maya the Texan unidentified is in the changing room, so Chifu orders Maya to evacuate the students and keep watch for more enemies. Upon hearing Maya's warning, the girls join the battle and intercept another enemy. Meanwhile, the hostile woman introduces herself as Autumn, a member of an organization called Phantom's Task, and continues to attack Ichika, but Teitnashi arrives to help him. Meanwhile, Cecilia and Ling engage in a battle with the enemy Is, but it proves to be more powerful. Teitnashi shields Ichika with a water barrier, preventing Autumn from bringing them down. Teitnashi utilizes Manomachines to manipulate water, proving to be highly effective. However, Autumn manages to damage Tetnashi and immobilize her. In response, Ichika re-enters the battle, dragging Autumn towards the campus. At that moment, the other is reappears, claiming to be there to retrieve Autumn. Ichika asks for the pilot's identity, but she immediately launches an attack against him. Charlotte and Hauki confront Autumn, while Ichika faces off against the unknown pilot, who manages to defeat him. Suddenly, the pilot receives a call and retreats, leaving the scene while Autumn detonates her armor and escapes. Now, Maya and Chifu assess the hostile pilots, they identify the Ez of one of them as a stolen English armor, leading them to deduce that Ichika's Bayakrashiki is the new target. Meanwhile, Autumn is having a discussion with the other pilot when their leader, Squall, is revealed. She has been behind everything to seek revenge against Chifuyu. At the academy, Teitnashi reveals to Ichika that she was so close to him because her mission was to protect him, and that her family is known for participating in secret operations like this. The next day, Ichika falls into a trap and gets kidnapped, but Maya appears in a peculiar disguise and announces a competition called the best service provided for Ichika. Ichika is confused but has no choice but to sit and watch the spectacle. The first contestant is Hauki, who wears fox ears and a tail and offers him tea. 
Hauke is nervous but manages to make him have a good time, and they share a moment of intense eye contact. However, Maya announces that time is up. Next is Cecilia, dressed with bunny ears and a tail, who teaches Ichika how to play billiards while trying to seduce him. Then Charlotte gives him cookies while dressed as a French poodle. She asks him to close his eyes as she tries to feed him the cookies with her mouth, but the jealous cries of the others alert Ichika, and the cookie ends up falling between Charlotte's breasts, and she takes the opportunity to suggest that he try to eat it. However, Maya interrupts and disqualifies her from the competition for doing something indecent. Laura takes her turn dressed as a black rabbit and invites Ichika to play darts to win prizes. Ichika wins a prize that contains Laura's swimsuit. Suddenly, the lights go out and the stage changes. Tate Nashi appears dressed as a cat and seduces Ichika up close, but the lights come back on and Ling enters, demanding that Tate Nashi return her costume. But she manages to escape from Ling's grasp. Maya then asks everyone to return to the stage for the final segment. Upon arrival, Chifuyu greets them dressed as a maid and feeds Ichika by hand, while the others wish him a happy birthday. Ichika thanks them all, especially his sister, as it has been a long time since he celebrated his birthday with her. Later, Maya asks him who he thinks was the winner, but Ichika answers that it was Chifuyu, so the others get angry. At night, Ichika mistakes a girl for Chifuyu, but she tells him that she is actually him because she will take his life, although her real name is Madoka Oramura. Ichika is confused, and she shoots at him. Madoka intended to kill Ichika, but Laura's shield stops the shot just in time, and she attacks Madoka, who manages to escape. Ichika thanks Laura while noticing her beautiful eyes, causing Laura to blush. At night, while escorting imported equipment, Charlotte and Ichika encounter unidentified hostile as units. They defeat the enemies, but one of them causes an explosion near Charlotte. However, Ichika shields her. The next day, Maya examines Ichika and informs him that he is fine, but his engine is showing abnormalities. After conducting tests, they conclude that Ichika needs to temporarily refrain from using his armor until it is repaired. Charlotte then volunteers to protect Ichika in the meantime. Later, Laura inquires about Ichika's preferred panties from a catalog, expressing her interest in knowing his preferences. The topic becomes a discussion among all of them, and Charlotte realizes that her own panties have gone missing. She goes to her room to put on a different pair, but also disappears. She realizes it's a flaw in her own is and considers taking it off, but decides against it as she wouldn't be able to protect Ichika. So she tries to go about her activities with great embarrassment. The girls learn about the abnormalities in Ichika's is, so they argue about who will protect him. But once again, Tate Nishi wins the argument and takes on the mission. Later, Laura notices Charlotte's situation and lifts her skirt when she has the chance. But just then, the issue had been resolved and Charlotte had her panties back. On another note, Maya discovers the cause of the malfunctions, the peculiar material in the core of one of the imported prototypes that had a negative impact on Ichika's is, as for the attack, no connection with Phantom Task was found and it appears that they were spies. The next day, Karuko asks Ichika and Hauki to be interviewed by her older sister, who works in an advertising company. Ling interrupts, showing her own modeling photos, but Chifuyu sends her back to her classroom. Later, Ichika asks Hauki if she will accept the interview. She initially wants to decline, but just then, Karuko arrives and offers them free dinner tickets to a luxurious restaurant after the interview. So Hope quickly takes them without hesitation and accepts the interview. On the day of the interview, Nanjisako, Karuko's sister, begins by asking Ichika about his experience attending an all-girls school, and he responds that it's uncomfortable due to the limited availability of men's restrooms. Then she asks Hauki how she felt receiving a new is from Tabane, and if she has any intention of becoming a representative of her nation. Hauke expresses gratitude to her sister for the suit, but clarifies that she doesn't have any plans to become a representative. Najizako then asks them who is stronger between the two, and Hauke confidently claims that she is, with Ichika confirming it. During the photo session, Hauke puts on the given dress, realizing it's a bit daring, but she wants to seize the opportunity. Najizako starts the photo shoot, instructing them to get closer. Both of them are nervous but must continue, so Ichika holds her by the waist, and then she embraces him. On the way back to the academy, Hauke is happy. Due to her distraction, Hauke stumbles and breaks her heel, prompting Ichika to offer her a piggyback ride. Hauke falls asleep, and in her dreams, she whispers that she loves him. On the other hand, Squall confronts Madoka about their last encounter with Ichika, but she claims she is not interested in him, leading Squall to understand that she wants to go after Chifuyu. Meanwhile, Ichika recalls his encounter with Madoka and asks Chifuyu if they have another sister, but Chifuyu responds that it's just the two of them. Later, Maya announces a couple's duel, so Tate Nishi asks Ichika to choose her younger sister, Kanzashi, for her to gain experience. Ichika agrees and goes to find Kanzashi, but Laura wants to be his partner, but he tells her that he already has one. This information is overheard by the other girls, causing each of them to believe they are the chosen one by Ichika. Unexpectedly, when Ichika proposes to Kanzashi to be his partner, she indifferently refuses. However, the next day, Ichika continues to insist to Kanzashi, and she wonders why and rejects him by hitting him. Later, 
Tatenishi tells Ichika that Kanza she must be feeling pressured because she assembled her own is, and her sister believes she needs to live up to certain expectations. On the other hand, the girls have already learned that Ichika wants Kanzashi as his partner, so each one trains hard to get back at him in the championship. Tatenashi interrupts Haki's training and proposes to be her partner. She accepts and Tatenashi begins analyzing her physical condition. Later, Kanzashi tests her is at first, everything goes well, but then the suit malfunctions and she starts to plummet from the sky. Luckily, Ichika was searching for her and found her just in time. Kanzashi thanks him for saving her, and he invites her to have a meal together. Later, he asks her again to team up with him, and she finally accepts. Kanzashi and Ichika repair and upgrade her is with the assistance of the Academy's maintenance team, utilizing data from Ichika's Baya Kurshiki. But later, when Kanzashi goes to find Ichika, she discovers him talking to Tatnanashi and learns that the computer data used for the upgrades in her is were not from Ichika's Baya Kurshiki, but rather from her sister's is, it turns out her sister was secretly behind the improvements. Shocked by this revelation, Kanzashi flees unnoticed. Suddenly, a red alert sounds and Maya announces that they are being attacked by more advanced is androids. Shifu orders the teachers to evacuate the students, while the combat instructors prepare to counterattack. The androids target Lang, Cecilia, Laura, and Charlotte, and Kanza she is about to be attacked as well. However, Ichika arrives to save her, so he attacks while she activates her, is to join the fight. Hauki and Tatenashi seem to handle their target well until Tatenashi weakens but uses what she has left to give Hauki an opportunity to finish him off. Tatenashi is injured in the explosion of her is, and when Kanzashi sees her on the ground, she becomes enraged and single-handedly destroys an android. However, another one immediately appears and is about to attack Kanzashi, but Ichika steps in and takes the blow. When she sees him on the ground, she gets distracted and doesn't realize she's about to be hit, so Tatenashi shields her with her body, sustaining serious injuries. Kanzashi is deeply distressed, but her sister hands her a special crystal to protect her. Hauki comes to Ichika's aid and replenishes his energy. Together, the three of them use their abilities to defeat the Iz, which ultimately explodes thanks to Tatenashi's crystal. Later, Tatenashi wakes up in the infirmary and sees her sister Kanzashi taking care of her. Kanzashi regrets distancing herself and being a bad sister, but Tatenashi reassures her that she isn't, and that she's her strong little sister. Kanzashi embraces her, shedding tears. Later, Maya informs Chifu that the attacking his androids are more advanced and use unregistered cores. They manage to recover two of them, but Chifu instructs Maya to report to the government that all of them were destroyed. The next day, Kanzashi pays a visit to Ichika to confess her feelings, but before doing so, she presents him with an anime DVD as a gift. Ichika asks if she likes anime, and she replies that she loves it and that she's in love with him, and she quickly runs off, only to realize later that she gave the impression that she loves the anime. The next day, the girls gather with Kanzashi, trying to find out if she has something going on with Ichika due to their recent closeness. Upon realizing that she is not truly a rival, they welcome her into their group. Later, Maya assigns Ichika the task of taking measurements of all of his classmates to adjust their ace suits and make some improvements. He protests, but Maya informs him that it has already been decided by the student council. Ichika tries not to look and closes his eyes, but it turns out worse as he ends up touching where he shouldn't. Later, Cecilia, Haki, and Ling fret over their small size increase, but Ichika doesn't see it as a problem, so he enjoys the meal Haki made for him. Ling asks for his thoughts on her cooking, and he praises her exquisite sweet and sour pork. Cecilia is curious about her own cooking, leading to a nervous debate about telling him the truth. Fortunately, they are saved by Charlotte, who interrupts to announce that she has brought Kanzashi. Cecilia, eager to learn how to cook, visits Hauki for lessons. Hauki teaches her how to make fried chicken, but when Hauki isn't looking, Cecilia adds perfume to the chicken, causing Hauki to get sick after tasting it. The following night, Cecilia seeks help from Charlotte, who teaches her how to prepare pot au feu. However, when Charlotte leaves her alone to watch over the pot, Cecilia once again uses perfume in the dish, and Charlotte unknowingly tastes it. Even Laura wakes up, discovers the food, and eats it. As expected, neither of them attends classes the next day. Cecilia invites Ichika to have lunch, but when she sees the bento prepared by Kanzashi, she believes she will never be able to match it. So she tells Ling that she is her last hope and convinces her to help. However, while cooking, Cecilia accidentally triggers an explosion. The next day, Cecilia apologizes to Ichika for not being able to prepare something for him, but he offers to teach her how to make his favorite dish. So they both go to cook together. On the other hand, Squall is having a meeting with Dr. Tabane and asks her if she is considered making his suits for Phantom Task. Tabane firmly responds that she would never do such a thing. Suddenly, Autumn appears and points a gun at Tabane, but Tabane quickly throws her against a glass display case. Just then, Madoka arrives to confront Tabane, but Tabane easily defeats her and mentions that she wouldn't mind making a personal is for her. The next day, the students go on a field trip. Upon arriving at the destination, all the girls want Ichika to take photos of them at various landmarks until they finally leave him alone. Later, he encounters Charlotte, who assists him in retrieving a part for his camera. 
and they go for a stroll together. Meanwhile, Ling, Cecilia, and Laura visit a shrine where people make wishes. Cecilia wishes for Ichika to notice her, Laura wishes to have children, but their moment is interrupted by Ichika, who arrives with Charlotte. The girls feel jealous, but Ichika tries to reassure them by saying he would never go on a date with any of them. This angers them and Ichika runs away from them. However, later on, they all make peace and enjoy some snacks together. Later, Ichika reminisces about his past and Hauki suddenly appears, suggesting they go to the bamboo forest. As Ichika tries to take a picture of Hauki, Squall appears and offers to take a photo of them together. Afterward, Squall bids them farewell, mentioning Ichika's name, leaving them confused as they don't know her. Afterward, everyone gathers to visit a tourist spot where they spend the whole afternoon. At the end, they all want to see Ichika's photos, crowding around him and accidentally causing his camera to fall. As Ichika goes to retrieve it, he encounters Madoka. Meanwhile, the class is about to depart and Ichika hasn't returned yet. Cecilia and Hauki are also missing. Shifu instructs them to leave while she looks for them, but suddenly the train doors close. Elsewhere, Taitna she encounters Squall and tries to stop her, but Squall manages to capture her. At the same time, Autumn attacks Cecilia and Hauki. Meanwhile, Madoka reveals to Ichika that she doesn't actually care about him, but rather seeks to assassinate Shifu. She proceeds to strike Ichika. Kansas she tries to stop it, but the system has been hacked. Meanwhile, Squall informs Tetanashi that she has planted a bomb on the train and tries to hold her back, prompting Tetanashi to warn Kanzashi via phone call. On the other hand, Madoka destroys the reinforcement as units and heads towards the train, but Ichika stops her. Chifu warns him about the bomb, so he quickly moves to defeat Madoka. Then Kanzashi manages to unlock the system, and they deploy the Iz units to stop the train and defuse the bomb. Meanwhile, Cecilia and Hauki successfully bring down Autumn and rush to assist Ichika. Laura and Ling are trying to stop the train and Charla is about to deactivate the bomb, but it's too late, and the bomb explodes. Ichika can't believe what he's seeing and becomes paralyzed. Taking advantage of his distraction, Madoka impales him with her lance. As he starts to fall, Hauki tries to catch him. So the smoke from the explosion clears, revealing that Laura managed to contain it with her shield, and everyone is safe. Cecilia confronts Madoka, but she's unable to defeat her, so Charlotte and Laura intervene to assist her. On his part, Ichika is once again facing the woman who resembles Shifu. She attempts to suffocate him, but Ichika asks for help from the girl in white, requesting more power, and she grants it to him. It can be understood that Ichika has always had a connection with his Bayakashiki, which manifests itself as a girl dressed in white. Meanwhile, the girls fight with Madoka. They manage to bring her down, but she rises again, enveloped in a sphere of energy. However, Teitnashi shoots at her and Ichika reappears to deliver a decisive blow. Finally, faced with their defeat, Squall and Madoka escape. After everything, Ichika enjoys a well-deserved break in the baths, but the owner changes the signs at the entrance, causing the girls to enter the same bath, putting Ichika in a tight spot. And thus, a second season concludes with the girls screaming upon discovering Ichika's presence. Infinite Stratus 2, Kitmatsu no Omoid. This OVA is an extended version of the group's vacation at the end of Summer Festival. Here reveals that each of the girls was trying to claim Ichika for herself. At the pool, she's enjoying her time with Ichika when they are almost caught by Ling and Laura, so she submerges Ichika in the water. However, a strong wave carries them out of the pool and Hauki and Charlotte take Ichika to the slides. It's Charlotte's turn first and Ichika has to hold on to her as one of the rules, but during the slide, he accidentally touches an inappropriate area. So when it's time for him to slide with Hauki, he asks her to be the one holding on to him, but she holds on to him tightly, causing their chests to press against his back. Later, everyone goes to the fair stalls dressed in yukatas and enjoying different dishes. The girls get competitive in the target shooting game and manage to win several prizes. As night falls, they gather around a bonfire to bid farewell to the last day of summer vacation. Infinite Stratos 2, or Purge Hen. There's a cyber attack at the academy and the doors are locked. So Chifuyu sends the girls to fix the problem by connecting their minds to the network and attacking from the inside. But something weird happens. Ling wakes up in her old high school, and after the rain, she goes home with Ichika to change but he wants to undress her himself. Meanwhile, Chifu assigns Tatenashi the mission of neutralizing the threats that have managed to infiltrate the academy. With great skill, she defeats them. On her part, Cecilia is at home and being attended to by Ichika, whom she recognizes as her boyfriend, which makes her doubt what is happening. Nevertheless, she goes to take a bath assisted by Ichika. On the other hand, Charlotte is in a luxurious house working as a maid when her master and fiancé arrives, who turns out to be Ichika, and he asks her to try on the wedding dress. Meanwhile, Laura is enjoying the meal Ichika prepared for her, and as a gesture of gratitude, he asks her to fulfill a wish for him. Timidly, she agrees and dresses herself in nothing but an apron. Meanwhile, Taitneshi has defeated the invaders but gets distracted and gets hit by a bullet, prompting Chifu to personally confront the infiltrating as Taitneshi whispers Ichika's name, and he senses something is wrong, rushing to her aid. 
She warns him about the danger the girls are in, so he goes to find them. With Kanzashi's help, he connects his consciousness to the network to free his friends from the mental control they are under. Inside, he finds Ling, who realizes that everything she was seeing was false. The fake Ichuka attacks the real one, but he fights back and defeats him, freeing Ling. Next, he goes for Cecilia and arrives just in time, defeating the fake Ichika and setting her free. The next one to be liberated is Charlotte, who is being seduced by the fake Ichika. Kifu, who is battling the infiltrated, is Pilot, showcasing her incredible skill in hand-to-hand -hand combat even without using her own suit. Meanwhile, Ichika goes to rescue Laura, who was about to be groped by the fake Ichika. Finally, he must go for Hauki, and Kanzashi warns him that the fake Ichika from her subconscious could be stronger than the others. Ichika doesn't understand why, so Kanzashi mocks him, as she understands that Hauki is the one who's most in love with him. Hauki is training with the fake Ichika, so the real Ichika challenges him to a duel, but is repeatedly defeated until Hauki realizes it is him and returns to the real world. Ichika doesn't wake up as he encounters Klo Chronicle, to Bane's assistant, who is sent into that virtual world to find something important. She doesn't reveal anything further and leaves. However, in the real world, the girls are worried and Laura suggests waking him up with a kiss, but they are interrupted by Chifu. Later, Ichika wakes up in the infirmary with Tet Neneshi, who confesses that her real name is Sarashiki Katana. On the other hand, Chifu encounters Klo and tells her to relay a message to Tabane not to interfere with the academy. Klo attempts to attack her, and Chifu underestimates her but realizes that Tabane's technology has advanced significantly. Once they calm down, Chifu offers Klo to visit her sister Laura, but Klo says she has nothing to do with her anymore. Infinite Stratus 2, Infinite Wedding The girls are in a cafe enjoying some desserts when they hear wedding bells and start imagining their own weddings. Hauki envisions her wedding day with Ichika, who is thrilled to be with such a beautiful woman and promises to protect her forever. Although he also expresses a desire to have a baby, which unsettles Hauki, because it would involve doing perverted things. Meanwhile, Kanzashi is experimenting with a device that produces artificial rain to sabotage the wedding. Suddenly, it starts raining in reality, but Kanzashi claims it's just a coincidence. They ask her why the device was named Fox Bride, and Kanzashi reveals that she was inspired by the costume Hauki wore at Ichika's birthday party, which embarrasses Hauki. It's Cecilia's turn, and she expresses her excitement for the honeymoon, sharing that her family has a tradition of traveling the world when a wedding is celebrated. She imagines herself on a cruise with Ichika, where things start to heat up between them. However, their moment is interrupted by a maid who suggests they go to the ballroom. There, Cecilia teaches Ichika how to dance, but they trip and fall to the floor, creating a romantic atmosphere. They are about to kiss when they are interrupted by Ling, who appears as a pirate and orders her crew to take Ichika to her ship. Ling takes offense at Cecilia's remarks, but she is then questioned about her own preferences. Ling finds it romantic to face hardships together with her husband, so she imagines herself with Ichika, feeling sad because their humble business has no customers, and he feels guilty for not providing a better life for her. However, he presents her with a keychain, promising that one day he will buy her a beautiful house, and they will put the keys on it. Their moment is interrupted by a policewoman, who turns out to be Charlotte, wanting to arrest them for operating a business without a license. Natalie harbors some resentment towards Charlotte in real life as well. Charlotte expresses her desire for a cozy house with a garden, a dog, and a child who resembles Ichika. She imagines Ichika coming home, and after putting their child to bed, he gives her a massage that gradually becomes more intimate. However, their moment is interrupted by Laura dressed as a cat, demanding to be fed. Then Laura envisions a grand wedding ceremony with a military parade featuring tanks and even a submarine. Ichika happily embraces the idea and, as a token of appreciation, gives her a short and comfortable wedding dress. He lifts her in his arms, making a vow of eternal love. However, their moment is interrupted by the sound of an alarm. It's the British Air Force led by Cecilia, who has come to capture Ichika and take him to her country. Finally, Anza she imagines herself getting married to a stranger in an arranged marriage, so she asks Ichika to save her. However, it's her sister who comes to her rescue. Amidst their fantasies, they are caught off guard by Ichika, who is with Tetmishi. The girls are furious, but he explains that he is just carrying their shopping bags and mentions that a wedding is being held nearby. This sparks their curiosity about Ichika's interest in weddings, so he admits that he would like to see his sister in a wedding dress. They all agree that Shifu would look beautiful, but they are disappointed. As the rain stops, they decide to go out for a meal, making Ichika pay for everything as punishment for breaking their hearts.